Did you know that our Earth is actually called a rocky planet? What? And every planet like Mercury, Venus, and Mars as well. They're also called rocky planets. All these planets are made up of rocks and metals and minerals. So what exactly are rocks? Well, if we're gonna have to know that, we gotta go all the way back in time. Let's rewind! Billions of years ago, Earth was formed from huge rocks. So, let's get to know rocks. A rock is a solid mass of geological materials made of minerals, metals, fossils, granite, sand, silt, and etc. Rocks differ from each other in color, texture, and origin. Basing on their mode of formation, rocks can be classified as igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. So how can you differentiate rocks from minerals? It's not that hard. Rocks are aggregates of minerals. Minerals are naturally occurring solid and organic substances. Rocks have no definite chemical composition, while minerals have definite chemical composition. Well, some examples of rocks are basalt, granite, sandstone, slate, and quartz, while some examples of minerals are iron, silicon, magnesium, and nickel. Now that you've known the introduction of rocks, my friend Kid and Mai will continue with igneous rocks. Hi, I'm Kid and my friend 9B. I'm here to explain igneous rocks, which is the first type of rock. The word igneous is derived from the Latin word ignis, meaning fire. These rocks were formed due to cooling, solidification, and the crystallization of the hot molten material of the earth, known as magma, formed at great depths in the interior of the earth. Igneous rocks are also called as primary rocks because igneous rocks were first to be formed. Characteristics of igneous rocks. They are hard and compact. They are formed by solidification yeah. of molten magma. They do not have layers. Yeah. They are generally weathered by chemical weathering. They are either fine granite, smooth and compact or may have large crystals with coarse texture. Classification based on origin of igneous rocks. Exclusive igneous rocks ex and intrusive igneous rocks. Exclusive igneous rocks. Exclusive igneous rocks cool quickly and as a result these rocks have fine granite or has lack of crystal growth. Exclusive igneous rocks are also called as volcanic rocks. Example basalt. Intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed from magma that cools and solidifies within the crust of the planet. Intrusive igneous rocks are also called as plutonic rocks. Example granite. Types of intrusive igneous rocks Batholith, Lacolith, Silts, Dikes, and Necks. Batholith, a very large igneous intrusion extending to an unknown depth in the Earth's crust. Example, Ranchi Batholiths, Lacolith, a mass of igneous rock, typically lens shaped, that has been intruded between rock strata, causing uplift in the shape of a dome. Silts, magma flows between layers of rock horizontally, it then hardens. This layer of intrusive rock is called silts. Example, hyperbasal rocks. Dikes. The magma when forced upwards fills vertical cracks or fissures in existing rock and it hardens there. They form dikes. Example, hyperbasal rocks. Next, sometimes the passage of an extinct volcano is filled with magma. It then solidifies there and known as volcanic neck or plug. Classification on the basis of a chemical compositions. Acid igneous rocks and basic igneous rocks. Acid, big, acid igneous rocks. Acid rocks have high silica content between 65% to 85% along with a relatively high amount of iron and magnesium. These rocks are composed of the minerals quartz, feldspar, and mica, example granite. Basic igneous rocks, they have higher percent oxides of denser elements and silica content varies between 40% to 60%. It is heavy and dark color, example gabbro dolalite. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. My friend Venkat Nivas explained to you all the sedimentary rocks. Good morning everyone. I am N. Venkat Nivas going to briefly explain about sedimentary rocks. Now let us know the formation. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made up of pieces of pre-existing rocks. Pieces of rocks are loosened by weathering, then transported to some basin or depression where sediment is trapped. If the sediment is buried deeply, it becomes compacted and sedimented, forming sedimentary rocks. Now, let us know the characteristics of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks may contain fossils. The process that turns loose sediments into rocks is called lithification. They are most widely spread on the surface of the earth and constitute about 75% on the surface area of the globe. Now, let us know the process involved. 
the most important geological process that lead to the creation of sedimentary rocks are erosion weathering dissolution precipitation and lithification erosion and weathering include the effects of wind and rain which slowly break down larger rocks into smaller ones now let us move on to classification on the basis of the formation mechanically formed rocks the breaking up of older rocks takes place through denudation by the agents like running water moving glaciers and wind chemically formed rocks these are formed by the direct precipitation of mineral matters from solution the accumulation takes place in lakes and lagoons organically formed rocks these rocks contain remains of dead plants and animals limestone is formed by skeleton shells and animal remains it contains larger proportions of lime now let us move on to classification on the basis of age and formation rewind rocks these are formed by the alluvial deposits brought by the flowing water of streams Lake strain rocks these are formed on the bed of the lake corresponding to successive periods of deposition glacial rocks these are formed by the glacial deposits in the forms of derives or tills eoline rocks these rocks are formed with the sand particles brought by wind marine rocks these are formed at the ocean floor these rocks are of two types calcareous sedimentary marine rocks and carbonaceous sedimentary rocks now we come to the end of the sedimentary rocks topic now my friend sivsai sanjay is going to continue the next topic thank you all hello everyone i am sanjay from 9b i am here to explain metamorphic rocks which is the third and last type of rock which we are going to learn today let's begin first we'll be knowing about formation of metamorphic rocks how are metamorphic rocks formed the word metamorphic is derived from the word metamorphose which means change in form these rocks were once igneous or sedimentary rocks which underwent change through physical or chemical processes the factors that take part in changing the form of rocks are temperature and pressure or both now we will know about a few characteristics of the metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks are harder and more compact than the original form most of the metamorphic rocks are impermeable which means they do not allow water to percolate through them metamorphic rocks are formed due to change in texture and composition of the pre-existing rocks now we shall learn about four types of metamorphism thermal metamorphism thermal metamorphism occurs when the transformation of the original rock takes place due to the influence of high temperature slate is formed from lake due to thermal metamorphism dynamic metamorphism dynamic metamorphism occurs when the transformation takes place mainly because of pressure at a great depth within the earth's crust marble is formed from dolomite due to dynamic metamorphism regional metamorphism regional metamorphism occurs during the mountain building process igneous and sedimentary rocks are buried deep inside the earth's crust gneiss is formed from granite due to regional metamorphism local or contact metamorphism when a small area is affected by heat or pressure to form metamorphic rocks this is known as local or contact metamorphism two facts about metamorphic rocks uplift and erosion help bring the metamorphic rocks up to the earth's surface slate a metamorphic rock can be formed from shale clay or mudstone i believe everyone had a brief idea about metamorphic rocks thank you everyone my friend rajesh will continue the next topic greetings everybody this is me rajesh again and i will be talking to you guys about a very short topic named economic significance of rocks let's get started Rocks are a great resources value. Soils are derived from weathering of rocks. Rocks are used in building materials such as paving roads, floors, building walls of homes, and bridges. And finally, rock wastes are used in manufacturing various articles. Thank you so much for giving me your time to explain about economic significance of rocks. Now my friend Nickel B from 9A will be explaining about the rock cycle. Hi everyone, I am Nickel B. I am here to explain the rock cycle which keeps our planet Earth young. The Earth is said to be 4.5 billion years old. As we know, rocks undergo a cyclic transformation. The continuous process of transformation of old rocks into new ones is called rock cycle.
The cycle may also pass through the process of formation of sediment, metaphormic and igneous rocks. Now we'll know how rocks are participated in rock cycle. As we know, igneous rocks form due to the volcanic activities on the surface of the earth. Igneous rocks are disintegrated and eroded by the climatic factors. The material is transported to the lower levels of the sea by the force of running water, wind, glacier and ocean currents. In the basis of the lake or the ocean beds in the sediment accumulate. Sediment accumulate undergo lithification through the process of evaporation, compaction and the cementation we as, as we discussed earlier. Once the loose sediments are is transformed into a sedimentary rock is then carried in depression or the sea floor further down under the earth. The sedimentary rock may further undergo a disintegrated and will be again recrystallized into igneous rocks and then transformed into metaphormic rock. In the, in the in case the rocks melts again in the results formation of igneous rock, the disintegrated material may again form sedimentary rock in completing any of these changes under hundreds and hundreds of years in involved. So, so now we had a brief idea of rock cycle. Thanks for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And that is the end of our video. Thank you so much, so much for listening to the video and watching it till the end. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And until next time, friends.